Hello, Environmental Policy One students. Dr. Conway here for Lesson Seven, or sorry, Lesson Eleven on hazardous waste. Um, this is an important uh, lecture because the waste management sector, in terms of uh, environmental employment, is is a very large sector in in all developed countries, but in Canada as well. Uh, so there are there are significant opportunities in the in in the management of waste streams. Uh, for employment uh, in, in environmental management assessment. So uh, that's an important thing. But, but hazardous waste also are just a very important issue from the perspective of ecosystem health and safety. And so we're going to delve into this in some detail. Um, it, it highly relates to the lecture we had last week on, on sound chemicals, sound management of chemicals which is also a very, very important topic. But uh, let's get started on, on this issue of, of hazardous waste um, and uh, go from there, okay? We, you know, basically we know that hazardous waste are, are a burgeoning issue. Uh, the management of hazardous waste is, is a critical issue in, in the, the modern consumer society. Industrialization and rapid urbanization around the world has resulted in a, a substantial you know, almost an exponential rise in the in waste generation, both in terms of two different waste streams, the solid waste stream and the hazardous waste stream, two different things. Solid waste is the stuff we put out on our street uh, for the garbage truck to pick up. Hazardous waste are managed in a different stream than solid waste are, all right? But the amount of solid waste is expected to increase as much as fourfold in some countries like India and 500% in others like Indonesia from, 20 to, from 2000 to 2020 as these societies become more and more middle class, which means higher and higher levels of cons consumption of consumer goods and higher and higher levels of manufacturing of those consumer goods that produces both solid waste stream and has this waste stream. Hazardous waste, including non-biodegradable plastic waste, now account for a massive and increasing percentage of waste produced. All right? Canada is no exception to this, as our waste volumes have and will continue to increase under current trends. They're continuing to increase, despite efforts being brought in to, to uh, control that waste generation. Canada's wealth and modern economy have permitted development of relatively complete infrastructure for managing these, these waste streams though. Legislation, regulation systems and facilities for management of all forms of waste. But nevertheless, the, to the extent that we continue to, to produce more and more of it, the more difficult it is, to, is going to be to manage. Significant challenges remain for government and business as waste streams grow and change, right? Um, well, we know that Canada is now moving to, ba to ban single-use plastics. This is one effort to, to control, uh, you know, a major loading into our hazardous waste management stream, uh, you know, that we, we deal with here in, in, in Canada. Now, on a global scale, scale single-use plastics are a major problem because they end up in our oceans and rivers and along our riverbeds and so on. In Canada, that problem, you know, we don't have that much um, escapage of, of uh, single-use plastics, but nevertheless, they, they clog up the hazardous waste management stream in a big way, okay? Now, the executive director of UNEP in 2008, and I still refer to this even though it's 12 years old, uh, gave a report to the UNEP Governing Council offered a useful broad classification of waste streams as follows. And it's important to understand, for students to understand the different types of waste streams that, that have to be sorted and managed. Well, collected, sent to a sorting site, sorted, and then moved into the appropriate waste management stream for that type of waste. Municipal waste from households and commercial centers, including hazardous waste, such as batteries, paint containers, and oil mixtures, have to be managed, right? In, in urban centers. And that's a big industry, very large industry to manage that. Industrial waste from processes or manufacturing and services, uh, uh, manufacturing and services, including hazardous waste, sludge from wastewater treatment plants, and so on. That all has to be managed, all right? And that would go directly into the hazardous waste management stream. The first one would be, would need to be sorted into different waste management streams. Discarded products and appliances such as computers and their peripherals, right? Electric appliances, motor vehicles, which constitute the emerging waste streams of what we call e-waste, end-of-life 
end of life vehicles are another big one, right? Uh, that's another big area where uh, we, you know, we've become so much better now at managing that waste stream than we were, say, back in the 1970s when only about 10 or 15 percent of a car could be recycled. Now cars can basically be recycled at 80 to 90 percent, which is a huge issue uh, for uh, for um, waste stream management because automobiles, you know, consume a lot of raw material and there's a lot of plastics in there and there's a lot of recyclable or, or what, what would be otherwise be wasted material that can now be recycled and captured. Healthcare and laboratory waste from hospitals and clinics, medical and nursing facilities and offices and laboratories, all that has to be managed as hazardous healthcare waste, which is a stream in and of itself, okay? Construction and demolition waste from construction activities or renovation of buildings and post-disaster wastes. This, is, this was a huge issue prior to you know, introducing economic instruments to raise the cost of disposing these, these construction wastes. Now construction companies are much more careful because they get charged a lot of money for disposing of this waste. And, and so an economic instrument was used to address a lot of that waste flow and that, that made a big difference, much like automobiles. It made a big difference in, in the solid and hazardous waste streams, but still lots of work to be done. Agriculture waste, crop residues, manure and chemical waste such as pesticides, including POPs, pol you know, PCBs, ozone depleting substances, all those are specialty chemicals uh, and, and uh, agrochemical waste that needs to be managed as well. Some of it would be solid waste, some of it would be compostable, but a lot of it would be hazardous waste that would have to be managed in the hazardous waste stream. Marine related waste such as marine litter, products dumped at sea, land based waste discarded in the marine environment, waste from dismantled ships and ship recycling, all of that has to be managed as well. And, and there's, there are millions of ships in the world, right? And those holes have to be, and those are contaminated sites by the time those are retired. They have oil and bilge waste, they have lots of chemical waste. Those all have to be managed, right? In an in a environmentally sound manner. To manage waste in an environmentally sound manner, its, it's generation, handling, storage, collection, transportation, and final disposal must all be care managed carefully. So it's the entire life cycle of waste, okay, that has to be managed, right? How much are we generating? Is there ways that we can control that to reduce that generation? How are we handling it? How are we are we handling it safely with the right equipment, with the right worker protection gear? Storage, are waste being stored, particular chemical waste being stored properly before they can be disposed of? Our collection systems, are they are they able to separate waste from hazardous waste from solid waste of different types of waste? Are they the collection systems and distribution systems set up properly? Do they have the capacity? Transport Transportations, you know, you can't just transport hazardous waste in any old truck. They have to be transported in, in, in appropriate technology, right? And licensed technology and trained workers, okay? Final disposal must be managed carefully. And that's where solid waste and hazardous waste are so much different because hazardous waste disposal requirements are so much more strict for obvious reasons because the waste is very hazardous. But to impose such management controls, it's necessary to understand it and identify what is or could be hazardous waste, right? A lot of the times when we're working in developing countries, we're just making, we're just helping countries understand what is hazardous waste within their hazardous waste stream. How can it be collected? How can it be distributed into proper waste management streams? The storage, the handling, the transportation, all of that has to be part of the capacity building in developing countries. And there are, inter fortunately, there are internationally agreed criteria and listings have been adopted for hazardous waste, okay? But let's define hazardous waste. The definition of hazardous waste is a material or substance with the potential to cause harm to public health and the environment. But that definition is far too imprecise, right, to help countries, including Canada and other countries, determine what is appropriate for the hazardous waste rooms. And the other complexity here is hazardous waste, may, hazardous waste may arrive in several different forms. Liquids, solids, gases, or sludges, right? It's not just one form that hazardous waste show up as. It's not just like cardboard or, or a wood product or a fiber product from construction or whatever. Hazardous waste can take those four forms and they can be, it can be ranged from, uh, you know, they can range from, you know, mildly hazardous to extremely hazardous and toxic waste. Um, 
and they may be byproducts of manufacturing processes or simply discarded products like computers, uh, like uh, cell phones and so on would be hazardous because there's a lot of heavy metals within those. There's a lot of plastics and if they're burned, they're going to produce dioxins, interference and coplanar PCBs. Uh, you know, uh, heavy metals are going to get into the soil, get into the air and so on. So these, these waste streams have to be managed very carefully. The hazards associated with waste depends on its composition and its physical and chemical properties. So there's you know, four different forms it can come in, but you know we also have to look at the, the characteristics of the hazard. And what, what is it? What is it made of? What will happen to it if it's, if it's just buried, buried? What will happen to it if it's burned and so on? All comes to determine waste that must be managed towards a, a consistent with sound management of hazardous waste. So because of this complexity of, uh, you know, for the non-expert, hazardous waste are described in considerable detail in the Basel Convention on the control of transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal. The convention listed hazardous waste and companies thousands of hazardous materials and substances that are toxic, poisonous, explosive, corrosive, flammable, ecotoxic, and infectious biomedical waste, okay? So, you know, if you look at the annexes to the Basel Convention, you'll see what I'm talking about. The lists are extensive because there's so many different, way, you know, substreams of hazardous waste that gen are generated within a modern economy, okay? Um, but in addition to that, in the hazardous waste stream, you also have to manage not only the hazardous waste, but products that have come into contact with hazardous waste. For example, cardboard boxes that have become contaminated from runoff from hazardous waste. Or oil drums, or drums where hazardous waste or chemicals have been stored and are, you know, uh, m must be treated as hazardous waste because they've been exposed to hazardous waste. You can have contaminated waste product, contaminated packaging and storage materials, waste left over from industrial, commercial, electrical and metallurgical processes, reclaiming hazardous waste sites uh, from indu old industrial plants, generate lots of hazardous waste because you have to take that soil out, you have to, to uh, destroy it as a hazardous waste because the soil has become, come into contact with a hazardous waste. Waste from pollution control devices, scrap materials, dust and residues, fly ash, spent activated carbon, waste sludge, all of that has to be treated as a hazardous waste, right? Article 1, paragraph 1 of the Basel Convention states, the following wastes that are subject to transboundary movement shall be hazardous waste for the purposes of this convention. Wastes that belong to any category contained in Annex 1, unless they do not possess any of the articles contained in Annex 3, Wastes that are not covered under paragraph A, but are defined as hazardous waste by domestic legislation of the party of export, import, or transit. Because the Basel Convention originally came into existence to prevent illegal transboundary movement of hazardous waste from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction that may not have the capacity to manage that. In other words, it, it basically came into place to, to prevent has this waste to be sh from being shipped from developed countries where it's expensive to dispose of it in an environmentally sound manner to developing countries where we could just pretend that it went away, all right? And there were lots of incidences, a very great deal of harm of has this waste being exported from developed countries to developing countries where they simply do not have the capacity to manage those has this waste, okay? The Basel Convention essentially has two major objectives, and we're talking a lot about the Basel Convention because the Basel Convention was one of those multilateral environmental agreements that basically defined the Canadian hazardous waste management regime. If you look at the Canadian hazardous waste management regulations, they're all in compliance with the Basel Convention and were stimulated by, by coming into compliance with the Basel Convention. Not all of them, but the core ones directly relate to uh, Canada coming into compliance with the Basel Convention. So, has two, the Basel Convention has two major objectives. Controls on the transboundary movements of hazardous waste, including rights and obligations for prior informed consent for countries receiving hazardous waste for recycling or final disposal, and the environmentally sound management of hazardous waste nationally and in trade, all right? Now, prior informed consent, there's a new convention called the PIC Convention that took over a lot of this from the Basel Convention, but essentially prior informed consent means is that no hazardous waste can be shipped from any country until the other country formally agrees to accept the waste, okay? 
Now, some wastes under the Basel Convention are banned for trade in, in any circumstance, but prior informed consent is very important when you're submitting, when you're shipping a hazardous waste of any kind, even if it's for recycling, because the, the receiving country has a recycling industry that can handle it, prior informed consent is still required. The environmentally sound management of hazardous waste nationally and in trade is the management of those waste streams we were talking about just shortly ago. Okay. Okay. ESM of hazardous waste in the Basel, Basel Convention is defined as taking all practical steps to ensure hazardous waste and other wastes are managed in a manner which will protect human health and the environment against adverse effects which may result from such wastes. That phrase, phrase is meant to include promoting an integrated life cycle approach to ESM of waste, involving strong controls from the, from the generation of hazardous waste to its storage, transport, treatment, reuse, recycling, recovery, and final disposal. Okay, and if you look at the way Canada's regulations are set up, it's trying to com bring into compliance with this general uh, prospect. We do much less effective job at, at slowing the generation of hazardous waste than we do at managing it once it gets into the waste stream. We do a much better job of managing the waste rather than controlling its volume. And that continues to be a significant problem with hazardous waste management in virtually all countries, including rich developed countries. Okay, But we, we, gen we produced a large recycling industry in this country that deals with hazardous waste products and they are very strictly regulated in, in what they can recycle, how they can recycle it, which technologies they must use and so on to prevent recycling operations from elite releasing hazardous wastes or chemical wastes into the air, the land, or water, okay? So, so to achieve environmentally sound management of hazardous waste, the Basel Convention requires that several legal, institutional, and technical conditions need to be met. A regulatory and enforcement infrastructure ensures compliance with applicable regulations. Canada has that. Our regulations on hazardous waste management are very strict and our hazardous waste management regime tends to be fairly tight as long as we, you know, we capture those hazardous waste into the waste management stream, okay? But as I said, the front end of the generation of hazardous waste continues to be a laggard in this. Sites or facilities are, uh, for storage of hazardous waste are authorized and have an adequate standard of technology and pollution control to deal with hazardous waste in the way proposed considering the level of technology and pollution control in the exporting country. In other words, it shouldn't be, no hazardous waste should be exported to a country that has lower standards than the country that's exporting it, okay? Um, and, and Canada has quite strict engineering standards for engineered hazardous waste disposal sites and for the incineration of hazardous waste at Swan Lake in, in Alberta or whatever. Um, you know, very strictly regulated, very strictly controlled. Operators of sites or facilities that which hazardous waste are managed are required as appropriate to monitor the effects of those activities. So any, has the, any major recycling plant, any major hazardous waste management disposal um, landfill, any major hazardous waste management incineration site will be heavily monitored for, for any um, byproducts. Appropriate action is taken in cases where monitoring gives indications that the management of hazardous waste has resulted in unacceptable emissions. We do that. People involved in the management of hazardous waste are capable and adequately trained in their capacity. That's everything from the collector, the truck drivers, the, the handlers of hazardous waste. All of them have to be trained and, and often licensed. Okay. The provision of sites or facilities authorizes environmentally sound to manage waste and hazardous waste at any point in their life cycle. Um, so in other words, there needs to be appropriate sites for the collection of hazardous waste for its temporary storage before it goes on to recycling or to final disposal. Okay. So in addition to the, and, and all of those things are in our regulations, if you look at Canada's hazardous waste management regulations. Okay. In addition to the above, several activities should be carried out in this context. Identification and quantifying the types of waste being produced nationally. We do that in Environment and Climate Change Canada. A best practice approach to avoid or minimize the generation of hazardous waste and reduce their toxicity, such as the use of cleaner production methods or approaches. That we continue to be weak on. All developed countries continue to be weak on this point. All right? Um, and I think that's just a reality that, that, that is still there 
uh, that we're not doing a good job at, at suppressing the, the, the growing generation of hazardous waste. We're not being very successful at reducing the toxicity of materials used in the production of products and in the, in the, in the composition of products. Um, a lot of these things are falling way behind in terms of what really is needed. But like I say, once hazardous wastes get produced and they get into the waste stream, they're very strictly managed in Canada. But how much of that can continue without better management of the front end? In other words, reducing the generation of hazardous waste. Now, some of the costs of managing hazardous waste for companies will do that for us, right? It has, and to, uh, companies have an interest to internalize you know, management of hazardous waste more effectively to reduce their hazardous waste management costs. But other things still need to be done, right? It's very expensive to dispose of hazardous waste in environmentally sound management in Canada. It's very, very, very pricey. And so companies have an incentive to try to reduce their hazardous waste, but more needs to be done in terms of reducing the toxicity of that waste. But that's a much larger discussion, um, typically a discussion that we would have, for example, in regulatory affairs. Okay. And the ESM of hazardous waste brings several different parties into the discussion, including it's why it's a very complex industry, and it's a very big industry managing waste streams. There's lots of employment in that sector, okay? Regulations in one way or another impact hazardous waste generators, management enterprises, those, those companies that are set up to manage waste streams, right? Transportation enterprises, those might be the same as the management companies, or they may subcontract transporters that have all the appropriate you know, equipment, licensed drivers, trained drivers, and all that. Waste processing, bulking, and transfer enterprises, those are the, those are the companies that will receive a lot of hazardous waste. If they're not government, will receive a lot of the hazardous waste, make sure that the waste streams are going in the right direction, that things are that are bound up and they're bulked up or they're processed in such a way that they can be more easily disposed of, right, uh, in terms of space saving and, and so on. Recyclers, the whole recycling industry is involved in this whole area. Has this way treat, treatment enterprises. Treatment enterprises are very important because it's against the law to to uh, have liquid hazardous waste uh, stored within a hazardous waste landfill. Uh, you know they must be pre-treated to, to turn them from a liquid to a to a sem to a sludge or to a, a semi-solid, right? So big why? Because liquids will obviously have a higher risk of running off into the natural environment. Has this waste landfills? Another party that's involved. Okay. So I'm not going to go into great detail on on each of these, but because the slides give you that, but I encourage you to go through the slides and see what these different sub subsectors within the hazardous waste management sector, um, what they do. Okay, hazardous waste generators, what their responsibilities are. I mean, uh, management companies, what they do. Okay, uh, transportation companies, what requirements they have. Right. Uh, waste processing, bulking, and transfer companies, <coughs> what they have to do, right? Recyclers, has this waste treatment companies, landfills, and so on. Okay, so as this waste management is a very big industry. Uh, solid waste management is a very, very big industry. Um, recycling sector is much bigger in Canada today than it was 20 years ago. It's a very large recycling industry in Canada. All of these sectors uh, ha are extensively regulated and they're extensively involved in environmental protection. So there are interesting uh, prospects in, in throughout the hazardous waste management stream and the solid waste management stream, and for that matter, the biomedical waste management stream. Okay, on that score, I'll let you go. We'll talk to you again next time. Take a good look at these slides and, and I'm sure uh, you'll have a much better idea of what's going on out there as a potential employment based in the waste management stream. Okay? Talk to you again later. Bye bye.